I'm just going to get started because I'm ready to roll. Let's do it. We're going to talk about got fervor. You know, Webster defines fervor as great warmth and earnestness of feeling. And it also says intense heat. Ooh, that's so awesome. Hey, Brother Paul. <clears throat> So great warmth and earnestness of feeling and intense heat. And I think that's an interesting definition, especially as we could apply it to ourselves as Christians. Because Paul wrote to the Christians in Rome, trying to encourage them a little bit, and he said, never, never, never be lacking in zeal. But keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. That's in Romans 12, 11. So we're never to lack in zeal. And we're to keep our spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Now, we all know that life comes in and life happens and situations come about and drama and trauma and all kinds of things. And it attempts to overcloud our fervor and our zeal in serving the Lord. But Paul admonishes us here in Romans not to let go of that, to hold on to that fervor and that zeal that you had in the Lord. And I just challenge us today to remember how when we first knew Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, oh man, we could hardly wait to share with everybody what happened because our lives had changed so much. And now we discover when you look at polls that are taken in church growth circles and so on, that about 90% or more of Christians have never shared their faith, have no interest in doing so. They just feel like if I just work in the church, hand out a bulletin or do some ushering or parking lot, I'm good. <laughs> no, that's in-house maintenance. That's what I call that. It's in-house maintenance. You know, we all need to do some chores within the church family, just like we do chores in our own natural families. We have different ones take out the trash, different ones wash the dishes, so on and so forth mow the yard. We all have different chores that we do to maintain the house that we all live in and function. But what really floats our boat is when we're actively engaged in the gifts and the bent that we all have in life, in our careers, and, and we enjoy getting up and accomplishing a thing. Well, in Christendom, what really moves our zeal o -meter, if you will, or our excitement for the things of God is when we are sharing our faith, strategically working with the Holy Spirit and bringing someone to Christ, getting them baptized in the Holy Spirit, ministering healing, discipling a new believer is so energizing. Oh my goodness. When you watch how God works and moves through them. So when Brother Paul in Romans 12 encouraged us to never be lacking in zeal and keep our spiritual fervor, that tells me that it's possible to lose your zeal. Hey, Sister Lynn and Brother Leon. And it's also possible to let go of your spiritual fervor. But I've got good news for us today. We can fan the flame that's still smoldering on the inside of us. And we can fan that flame until it gets white hot again. Sometimes in order to do that, what we have to do is get engaged in doing some things different than how we've always done it before. Because we know if you do the same thing, you're going to get the same results. And when Jesus told the fishers of men that were out there fishing all night long, toiling all night, not catching anything, cast their nets on the other side of the boat for a great harvest, they had to be willing to obey what he said and do it different. Because you know what Peter said on the Lord. You know, this has been our job since we were children. We know how to do this. And we worked hard all night long. And... You know, don't tell us what to do, basically. But then he had a change of heart and mind, and he said, nevertheless, at your word. And so what they did is they cast their nets, and you know the story. The catch was so big, they had to have others come in and help them. What an amazing problem to have, where you have to have other people come in because your blessings are so amazing. So when the Apostle Paul says, never, never, ever be lacking in zeal and keep your spiritual fervor, that demonstrates to us that you can let go of your fervor and your zeal if you're not mindful of it. It's kind of like that frog that gets put in the pot of water and then the heat keeps gradually getting turned up. Sometimes we don't realize, like how John wrote in Revelation, 
that we've lost that first love. And he said, consider how far you've fallen from that place where you used to be so excited about the things of God. One of the things I've discovered is when believers are equipped with what I call tools of the trade for the father's family business, and they are able to engage in spiritual conversation and dialogue with people and bring them to a place where they want to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, woo, that is a high like no other. It's fantastic. When they minister to people and they get baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, woo, <laughs> zeal and that fervor notch goes up, that zeal meter goes, <laughs> When they disciple people with the discipleship strategies that I teach, I mean, their joy. I've had so, so many Christians, longtime Christians, they'll say things like, when I do those Bible studies and facilitate them with those new Christians, I get so energized all over again myself. And that's so true. That's what happens. And when we get to minister to people and see them healed, like last Friday night when I was ministering, I shared yesterday how some pigeon-toed feet went straight and a lady's shoulder that was totally out of whack it she just the holy spirit took her arm and did some things with it and it was healed and other miracles we had and that's fantastic but those things energized everyone in the room they were like whoa look at what god is doing so when we as christians know how to do these ministry things that Jesus commissioned all of us to go do, like I talked about yesterday, the greater works. Oh, that was so good. When we're doing those things, our fervor and our zeal is never lacking. <laughs> it's at an all-time high. So when we're admonished not to let go of these things, there's an easy fix for that. We can get equipped with, as I said before, the tools of the trade for the Father's family business, and we can learn how, in our own words and personality, to minister effectively to people within our relationship circles. You know, cold market evangelism, if I can just share some quick little stats with you, when you go up to people in the street or somewhere out in the world that you have no relationship with, the statistics are one to two percent come in from cold market witnessing. And yet, where does the body of Christ seem to spend most of their time when they want to send people out to witness? They send them out in the cold market where people have no relationship with them at all, and you're interrupting their day, and so you're already off on the wrong foot, and it produces nothing. But warm market, where people that you have relationships with, whether it's coworkers, neighbors, friends, family, extended family, 70 to 90 percent effectiveness so what i'm sharing and teaching all these years since 1979 is equipping believers how to minister within their warm market people that they already have relationship with but sometimes christians say well but my friends and family they don't want me to talk about god anymore well it's because you're going all about it the wrong way <laughs> i would love to show you how to do some things differently so instead of losing friends and family, you could gain friends and family, not only into God's family, but even closer in your own relationship and get on the same page spiritually. One lady said, I've never led anybody to the Lord. I don't know if I can do this. I said, just take the course. Do you know she took the course? Her teenage son was coming home from an evening out with friends and she engaged him in conversation in the ways that she was learning how to do in this course. And do you know that she led her teenage son to the Lord? That was the first person she ever led to Christ. Her joy was so ooh, overflowing that her own son now knew Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. But then you know what happened? He said, Mom, can you share this with my friends? The next day, he brought his friends over. She shared with them, and they all received the Lord. And then she taught them how to share with their friends. And then she wrote me a couple years ago, and her son is now a chaplain in the military because he wants to share his faith with those guys and gals in our armed services. I'm telling you, if you just will get the equipping, get the training, amazing miracle things God can do through you. What if she had let go of that zeal and that fervor and said, well, I don't think I can do this, and never took the time, the trouble, and the investment to get equipped? What would have happened to her son and his friends? 
Because you know when he came home that night, what he shared with her? He was a little discouraged because all of his friends were thinking about committing group suicide that night. Hmm. Talk about the timing of the Lord. Talk about the high of God's zeal and fervor in her heart when she realized God used her to cause all those young people to have a total turnaround spiritually and in their lives and in the projection of their lives. So it's powerful.